Hello, and thank you for joining us for a Cherished Masterclass wo Woven Wonders, the Evolution of Fine Rugs with Kayvon Woven Arts. I'm Caroline Cole, hosting our guest today, Kayvon Barukim, president of Kayvon Woven Arts. If you're not familiar with Cherish, the company was founded in 2013 and is now one of the largest home decor marketplaces in the world. With an inventory of over 1 million items sold by American and European vendors, we are the source for one-of-a-kind antique and vintage pieces, as well as newly made inventory. A big welcome to the Cherish trade member audience. My role is with the trade team here at Cherish. I work with designers across the East Coast, assisting with sourcing projects on the site. I'm delighted to introduce our guest, Kayvon Barrow-Keen, president of Kayvon Woven Arts, a retailer based in Buckhead, Atlanta, Georgia. This business has been in operation for 38 years and Cherish has been lucky to list their inventory for the past eight years. They specialize in decorative, antique and modern rugs. Please keep in mind that many of the rugs shown today are available for purchase. Kayvon himself comes to this field from a background in academia that is highly analytical. He has advanced degrees in industrial and systems engineering and math and computer systems, in addition to training in art and design. He has intimately studied the rich history of rugs over the past 38 years and established himself as a singular source for unique pieces. At Kayvon Woven Arts, they believe that rugs are artwork for the floor, and we could not agree more. I'll hand it over to our guest. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Caroline, it's good to be here. We are going to briefly examine the designs of early carpets, explore the story of earliest carpets ever discovered. Then we move to the evolution of designs and discuss how designs, colors, and trends have changed during the past centuries. Hand oiled drugs are among the very early forms of fine human crafts. Up until the mid 20th century, however, the origin of the first carpets that were made remained a mystery, including the time period, structure, and the original designs. <laughs> In the study of uh, ancient Persian empire, there are mentions of magnificent carpets in Persepolis made of jewels and precious stones, which was cut to pieces and taken as a prize of war on the fall of Persian Empire. Needless to say that no trace of this carpet has ever been found, though it would have been nice to have a small piece of it. Uh, the discovery of the fragments of 9th to 12th century demonstrates hand knotted carpet rugs with random designs. Uh, these early versions display designs with primarily straight or angular lines, likely were they made by nomads that merely got their inspiration from nature. In 1949, archeologists working in an ancient Scythian prince grave's gravesite in Siberia, Kazakhstan, excavated this carpet. This is the most significant discovery ever made, this carpet. This is the most significant discovery ever made as discovered this date back to 400 BC. Next slide, please. The design elements of this carpet are clearly in line with the remains of the old Persian empire palaces in Persepolis. Upon examination, this carpet is a testimony to the presence of organized hand knotted carpets 2,500 years ago and show how well made this carpet is. This carpet is currently at St. Petersburg Museum. In the early 16th century, with the rise of Safavid dynasty, Persia expanded its borders to most of Asia while Ottoman Empire border included part of Eastern Europe and 
Northern Africa. So two superpowers with the wealth and with the wealth appetite for arts grew rapidly. The great Shah Abbas of Persia ordered creation of large workshops with massive looms, trained weavers and employed designers to draw highly intricate designs that illustrated sophisticated motifs. Most of these important carpets were made in Tabriz, Kerman, and Isfahan. Meanwhile, Europeans took notice of these amazing carpets and ordered carpets for their own palaces. At the same time, Ottomans were creating their own masterpieces in Usha. This period marks the evolution of designs in carpet making. One of the most important carpets made during this period on this picture is the Ardbeel carpet, a very finely woven carpet, palace size with amazing intricacy and details. Shown in the next slide. This large carpet is at display in VNA Museum, London. Other example of important carpets made in other regions is this 16th century double medallion Ushak and it's the 17th century dragon carpet from Caucasus region. Notice the Caucasus region is a little bit more geometric and still tribal because it was a hard to reach area. Uh, please note that here from here on, we are going to, uh, until end of presentation, we're going to switch to K1 Woven Arts Collections. Uh, as Caroline uh, indicated, these drugs are all available in the site and for sale. The first one we're going to examine is the very fine, rare Ottoman era, pure silk rug with exquisite detail and very finely six, circa 16th century. Uh, looking at tapestries, uh, European tapestries that were made to decorate the walls of palaces, churches, and large European homes. Hard to believe, but at times they also serve that insulation uh, from cold, kind of an expensive insulation. But nevertheless, that was one of the uses of it. Uh, this beautiful 15th century in our inventory uh, is more of an architectural design with a garden scene. The next one is a 16th century wonderful tapestry with great colors. This tapestry has a lot of details with columns, people, horse and carriage, trees, vines, flowers, full of vegetation and few mystic figures. Notice this tapestry behind me is from uh, 17th century, filled with trees, shrub uh, and greeneries and has retained uh, largely its original colors and in good condition. This is a French Aubusson from mid 19th century. French also made uh, savonneries, mix image. And uh, Spain, Spanish rugs. Spain was one of the first European countries to make carpets. Uh, we're going to talk about Caucasian rugs that we looked at the 17th century from Caucasus. Caucasian rugs were made in the Caucasus region, which is between the Black Sea and Caspian Sea, mainly in the countries of Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. We should note that early Caucasian rugs are mostly collector pieces. This Saishur carpet uh, such as this one made in early 19th century with wonderful drawing, great details, motifs, and brilliant colors. This finally made Caucasian from mid 19th century. And 
this Kazakh is towards end of 19th century. We're gonna examine some Suzani's and embroideries, uh, mainly made in Uzbekistan. Uh, go back to the first one, please. This 18th century Suzani uh, from Uzbekistan is uh, made of linen and uh, with the silk embroidery on top of it. Uh, next image is a very rare gold, metal, and silk embroidery. So the background is silk and metal, uh, is metal and gold, and then the uh, embroidery on top is uh, made of silk. In mid to late 19th century, there were several workshops that were made very fine rod and created some very impressive carpets. Among them, Hajjah Lili in Tabriz, Motashamin Kushan, and uh, these names are now major brand names in carpets of that era. There is also Ziegler and Company, which had a huge impact in the revival of the late 19th century car carpets. We'll go back to this one in a moment, but at display are the hot jelly little breeze rugs with the exquisite details. Next uh, image is a uh, image from a bijar carpets from Kurdistan, which are extremely known for extreme durability, wool on wool with a ornate medallion, exquisite colors. And this one is a more of a geometric all over design from the same region. We're gonna go back to Ziegler and Company, which was a multinational European company that traded with Persia in the late 19th century. They noticed the beauty of Persian carpets and saw the opportunity to make their own rugs for European market. Ziegler and Company set up their new looms in Sultanabad, the old capital of Persia at the time. They employed European designers to draw new designs that were less intricate and more floral. They also established variety of colors that were lighter and more pastel away from traditional jewel tones. These new carpets were made to work with European decor, significantly different in designs and colors than previously made by Persians and Turks. This was the revival period of rug making and introduced the decorative rugs for the first time. Worth to mention that this period set new trends that have carried on for over a century and has influenced many rugs that are made in the present time. Uh, 19th century rugs, Serapi rugs. We all love Serapis with the bold medallion, geometric. Uh, this one is has an ivory background. Uh, the next one illustrates a Bakshayr, kind of a sister to the Serapi. Bakshayr rugs are have more saturated colors and the dyes. Uh, that's, they're made very near where serapis are made, uh, the dyes are uh, made with uh, minerals that kind of have special solutions in them and make the colors very vibrant. The next one is uh, an Oliver Serapi from turn of the century. And the uh, next subject is antique Malaya and Hamadans, another significant area of rug making in Persia which made some large carpets as well as a lot of gallery sizes. These are some examples of them with unique colorations. And uh, Kerman, we are familiar with Kerman as one of the major centers of fine rugs. This is a Lavar Kerman. Lavar is a small, uh, village or was a small village near Kerman, which made 
uh, very fine carpets. Uh, this next carpet is an antique Tehran carpet, uh, the capital of Iran, with Persian blue and saffron dyed border with uh, beautiful colors and uh, amazing details with birds and uh, deers, peacocks, and lots of uh, interest inside the field. Uh, we're going to go back to the late 19th century Ushak rugs that were also influenced by European rug makers. Newly designed Ushak rugs, very different from their traditionals, traditional designs, took off in the late 19th century and well into early 20th century. These Ushaks had more unique variety and coloration than that range across the spectrum. This one, you could see the French influence on this very large Ushak. Next one, kind of a green and coral tones. Uh, this is a saffron, yellow saffron background with the bold uh, boulder. Another square shape. This is a little unusual because it's more of a saturated tone, but a very fine early Ushak. This is what we see most uh, from Ushak discoloration. And this last one is a Angora Ushak. Angora Ushaks are highly prized for their quality made purely of Angora wool, which is the best material that can be used, also very pricey. Um, this image shows an antique cotan, a very large one with a pomegranate design with beautiful colors. Uh, we're going to look at American hook rugs. This one uh, is a significant piece because of its drawing, the coloration, and also that it's a large rug. This American hook rug showcases a children's nursery rhyme. Next. Next one, yes. And mostly a custom made rug at the time. American hook rugs also made uh, figures like dogs and birds. And this is a hunt scene with a dog and some, some of the birds like pheasants and variety of birds around it. American, also Native Americans made flat feet rugs, mostly known as Navajo but not all Native American rugs are now. This is an example of it. Vintage rugs are rugs that are made between 1930s and 1970s. We carry a very large inventory of vintage rugs of various types and origins. Vintage rugs are one of a kind and can be very unique. We just have to really look for the most distinct ones to find them. Finding good drugs in general is a really a 24 seven uh, job for our buyers all across the US, Europe, Turkey, Afghanistan, India, and more. So these show some of the vintage Turkish carpets from various regions. This is from Eastern Turkey. Rugs that display here. Uh, gallery size runner. Uh, we know Moroccan rugs that are also vintage from mid century, coming mostly known as Beni Orain, but different tribes make them. This is definitely the inspiration of that. That drug was from the mountains and the hills. Uh, this is a Swedish carpet from mid-century. And uh, European arts and craft rugs, design, one of the designs. Chinese rugs uh, made as uh, uh, art deco and uh, come in all kinds of colors, very popular purple rug in Cherish. Next, we want to show you the K1 Woven Arts uh, showrooms that is consists of two buildings and a total of six floors. 
unusual for a rock show. Uh, our showrooms, we like to think, has they have a lot of layers. Walking in different parts of our showroom is a different visual experience. Each floor has a unique theme as they house different products. Next are uh, flat weave, which are include embroideries and then paneled rugs. The first one uh, is a paneled rug that has been put together to make a large piece. These rugs are good for casual spaces as well as modern spaces that add a layering to their uh, room. This is an all embroidery neutral tones. And this one is half clean, half embroidery. Next image shows a paneled design rug. These are all vintage, uh, brown tones with the zigzag, horizontal and diamond shapes. And uh, this is another diamond shape, but with very bright colors. This is from 1960s. We're going to switch to the Angora Ushak, which we talk about is the one of the most sophisticated type of rugs made uh, are uh, these newly made Ushak rugs that are great alternative to the expensive antique Ushaks. And uh, plus antique Ushaks sometimes don't offer the colors that these rugs have. They are made with Angora wool together with old wool to maximize their authenticity and create the texture of antique ushak rugs. It takes an average of one year or more to complete one of these carpets. Uh, next one is modern kotan, which is replica of 18th and 19th century kotan and Turkestan rugs. Next four slides. And uh, one of the newest trends uh, nowadays are these modern, modern casual and distressed Moroccan rugs. This is purely a modern rug with black and white. Next image is a pure silk distressed modern rug. These can all be custom sized, custom made, colorful modern. With the same, and this is a modern casual, more of a kind of a relaxed texture, could work in a uh, modern setting, in traditional setting. It, it's a minimalist kind of design that could work in many different areas. Uh, this type of rug, particularly, are very, very popular. And some with more designs and elements in it of centered. They are made in runners and diamond shapes, greens, pinks. The next subject is Scandinavian designs, which are a remake of the late 19th century and early 20th century fabric designers of Scandinavian. These designs were then made into carpets in first to middle part of the 20th century. These are remake of uh, those rugs, can be ordered and made in any size. I want to thank you all uh, who joined us today and cherish for the opportunity uh, for providing this opportunity for us to be here. We are proud to be one of the leading companies for the finer and more unique rugs in the United States. We have nearly 2,500 2, rugs and cherish. I invite you to look at them. I also invite you to visit our website to see the extensive collection of fine rugs we carry. And with that, I'm happy to take uh, 
or answer any questions. Thank you. That was a wonderful overview. I, I particularly love hearing about the historic examples. And we already have a few questions. Um, and one that I think is most important for our audience, I want to ask, um, what constitutes a fine rug to you? What factors should our viewers consider when they are shopping for a rug? Uh, that's a good question, because uh, while it's subjective, there are definitely several factors that are important in the quality of a piece. And most importantly is the quality of the wool, quality of the dyes, and expert workmanship, uh, how well the rug is designed, and uh, finishing touches and all the detail work that goes into it determine how well made the rug is. After all, rugs are a work of art and the overall beauty and artistic execution of the rugs impact the both the quality and overall value. It is, uh, it is worth to note that while having more knots per square inch could be a plus, it's not always uh, true that such rugs are better rocks as if, for example, quality of wood is not good, the number of knots would not really matter. Thank you, that, that's a great answer. Um, and related to that, um, another question is, is why invest in a finer rug? And because there are so many accessible options out there, especially on the internet, um, why should buyers look to a fine quality rug instead of something more economical? Well, in, in my opinion, which of course is unbiased, uh, finer rugs uh, give the room a better look. Uh, many lower grade rugs could give you the color to work with your room, but the fine rug is most certainly elevate your design and make everything on it or around it look better and finer. Also, uh, a finer rug is more durable. So when people say, is it high traffic area, I don't want to invest in a finer rug. On the contrary, finer rugs, finer made rugs are more durable. They clean better and more likely to be used again and again as you change your decor. Also worth to note that fine antique and vintage drugs are more organic options and earth friendly and have passed the test of time. But in any category, I encourage whatever you choose, try to get the best quality that the uh, budget allows. Thank you. Um, and uh, a specific question about wool. Um, why is Angora the best wool for Ushak rugs? And um, and relatedly, how did wool rugs survive for 2,500 years? Well, uh, let me answer this in two separate, because Angora is a, a very fine wool. It's soft, it's shiny, it gives a, a nice kind of feel to it. And you can create something with Angora wool better material that you cannot establish with uh, any other material. It's the difference between the very fine cashmere sweater and a wool sweater of various uh, qualities. But how did uh, the 2,500 year old rug survive uh, is an interesting story because in ancient times, uh, the body of royalties were buried with their belongings for afterlife. And we know that from Egyptian, from many different eras. Uh, these belongings, including gold, gems, and other valuables. Uh, and this was a subject to grave robbers getting in sometimes after the burial and steal those valuables. In this case, there was a carpet buried with the body, 
that was not an interest to the grave robber. So you shouldn't worry too much about uh, stealing drugs being stolen from your house. They're heavy and uh, not likely to be stolen. But uh, the story goes that perhaps it is, uh, it is the case that such an act of robbing the grave caused the frozen water to get into the, uh, the grave and freeze the carpet for 2,500 years as the carpet was, fro was frozen when it was found. And it's, it is kept frozen as of now. Uh, now you know the best place to keep your rugs if you want to keep them safe would be in the freezer. But uh, aside from that, uh, uh, the act of grave robbers caused this rug to survive. It's believed that there probably have been many, many other carpets that were made during that era and afterwards, but they just did not survive. Um, uh, and of the saw, while we are on this subject, if we're trying to uh, preserve or keep your, store your carpets beside the freezer, which is the best option, but some of the places that you do not want to store your carpets are in the attic or areas that uh, uh, don't get ventilation or don't wrap it in a plastic where it cannot get air. The wool in the rug still a breathing, uh, uh, it's still breathing and if, if you kind of get the air away from it, it's uh, subject to getting moth and uh, damaged. Well, thank you, Kayvon. This um, wraps up our time for this afternoon. And if any listeners have additional questions, I encourage you to contact Kayvon through his website and um, check out the listings on Cherish. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.